We're here at the ITU studio in Geneva, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Mr. Malcolm Turnbull, who is Minister for Communications for Australia. Minister, thank you very much for being with us today. Yeah, great to be with you. I'd like to start off by talking about uh, broadband. Australia is currently implementing a large-scale broadband network, and it's been very proactive about promoting the benefits of high-speed networks. Why do you believe that such a large investment in broadband technology is important for Australia? Well, connectivity is absolutely vital. The, the benefits of the digital age are only available if everybody is connected, and uh, that's obviously an expensive job, to be quite frank with you. The previous government, which uh, we were elected last September, the previous government uh, is spend, spent, committed us to spending much more than they needed to, and I wouldn't uh, necessarily recommend uh, the Australian model uh, of the government actually building the broadband network to other countries, but the principle of ubiquitous, affordable broadband is absolutely critical for all countries. And uh, the, ch the change of policy since uh, I became the minister has been to continue with the broadband rollout, but to seek to do so in a more cost-effective manner so that people are connected sooner and that they are connected more affordably. The biggest barrier to internet access is not technology, it is really income. And so if we want to get the benefits of broadband, particularly around the world in countries that aren't as wealthy as Australia, we've got to use technologies that make it affordable and, and focus on the service outcome, the connectivity that, that you require, rather than becoming fixated on one particular technology platform. Now, as we know, Australia is a, a large and, and geographically diverse continent. It could be so that it faces a, a lot of the same challenges in connecting its population to broadband nations as in the developing world. Can poorer countries learn from your experience and, and are you actively sharing your expertise with neighbouring nations? Well, we're certainly, we're certainly seeking to do that and I know the ITU in particular has had some case studies on the Australian experience and I'd welcome that. And I think the approach that we are taking now is very relevant to developing countries because what we're, the approach that we're taking is what we call technology agnostic or a multi-technology model so that we look at a particular area, look at what legacy assets are available in terms of copper or HFC or indeed conduit and whatever's available and then say what is the fastest in terms of time of construction cheapest and hence most affordable way of ensuring that the people in this area get connected. And that, that is the critical thing because I think a lot of countries will come under pressure from particularly from vendors who will want to push the shiniest, most expensive technology on them. And there'll be a, a tendency to always go for what is seen as the perfect technological solution. The critical thing is the outcome. You know, we, we should always remain, in terms of telecom, focused on the prize. What is the prize? People being able to connect at speeds and with capacity and functionality that enables them to do all the things they need to do and want to do. And, but above all, it has to be affordable. There is no point having a Rolls-Royce uh, product, a Rolls-Royce network that people can't afford. Now, Australia has been an active campaigner for free and open internet and the importance of the multi-stakeholder process. What's your impression of the current state of the debate and following, I mean, the Global Net Mundial Conference in Brazil a couple of weeks ago, for example, that raised a number of issues there? I thought that was a very promising outcome. I think there is, uh, there is uh, not unanimity, of course, but there is very broad support of the multi-stakeholder approach. And we have to recognise that the, the internet, this extraordinary piece of infrastructure, the most important piece of infrastructure ever built, has been built largely without the involvement of governments. You know, the United States involvement in the uh, naming and numbering function has been largely a reserve power. I've often described the role of the Department of Commerce as being a little like the way uh, the um, House of Lords is described in the Gilbert and Sullivan opera Iolanthe as having done nothing in particular but done it very well. And the United States should be credited for saying, well, the ICANN, the internet, the community of the internet has grown up and doesn't need our reserve power anymore. I think that's great, very commendable that America is, is doing that. But uh, what we have to do now, of course, is to ensure that everyone is satisfied that the ongoing governance is uh, meeting everybody's uh, 
uh, requirements. But we, we have to remember that this remarkable piece of infrastructure has not been built by governments. It has been built by the civil, broader civil society, you know, technology com companies and, and citizens, scientists, academics. It's a remarkable accomplishment. Talking about accomplishments, ITU is celebrating its 150th anniversary in 2015. I wanted to ask you finally, what for you is the value of ITU? The ITU is at the very heart of what it is to be human. There is nothing more human than engaging, than speaking. We are social animals, connecting. You know, think about all of the uh, characteristics of, of our species. And what, is, what can be more important than the fact that we are social animals? We, are all, we love to talk, to gossip, to argue. We love to be together. We, we flock together. And the ITU has been at the centre of ensuring that we, as technology has developed, we have been able to do that uh, across wider and wider distances, uh, across all countries, across all income groups, all demographies. And so I would say the ITU is at the heart of humanity. Minister Malcolm Turnbull, thank you very much indeed being with us today. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure.